sex after menopause, painful sex after menopause, vaginal dryness, vaginal atrophy, atrophic vaginitis, painful intercourse after menopause, low sex drive in women. I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources, mostly about hormone optimization. I help women in menopause, men with low testosterone, women with PCOS. So the sister of a friend of ours sent a message to my wife. Hi, Mary. <clears throat> my name's... Uh, I have a question. I just got married again after many years of being single and celibate, and I'm, I'll be 70 in June. And she said uh, <clears throat> that you guys, or your husband, knew all about hormones. Does that mean you do the thing where you uh, com do compounds or... Anyway, I'm just really interested because <clears throat> now I have a sex life and I'm like getting old and I'm like, can I still get hormonal help at my age? I'll be 70 uh, in June. This is a crazy question, but so this is a whole new ball game for me in many ways. Anyway, I just wondered if uh, you could give me any advice. Thank you, Mary. Bye-bye. The first thing I want to say to <laughs> Congratulations, and I wish you both the best of everything in the coming years, and may you have many long and loving and wonderful years together. Don't forget to forgive one another. Marriage is the thing that's going to grow a person into a better person, and marriage makes you stronger, just like hormones make you stronger. I'm going to talk about two different situations that you're probably going to run into when it comes to sex after 70 that have to do with your hormones. Now, there's lots of other things that sex after 70 is gonna bring up. But when we talk about hormones, there are two real areas that you need to look at. Number one is vaginal atrophy, also called atrophic vaginitis. Essentially, atrophy is when a part of your body basically shrivels up and gets dried out and just gets weak compared to what it normally is out of not being used very much. And so when you haven't had sex for a number of years, especially as you get older and you lose some of your hormones, the vaginal area gets greatly decreased in the amount of elasticity. It's not as stretchy as it used to be. It's not as strong as it used to be. There's definitely not as much lubrication naturally occurring as there used to be. Um, there can be painful intercourse. Uh, there can be dryness and itching, and it can make sex very uncomfortable. So there are basically two different solutions from a hormonal point of view. Now, there are lots of other solutions besides hormones. Of course, you'll want to take a look at uh, vaginal lubricants, or they're called personal lubricants. You'll want to find a personal lubricant that works for you. You'll want to avoid probably a propylene glycol or polyethylene glycol. And those types of ingredients tend to maybe cause some irritation or burning for a lot of women. Uh, but what I'd suggest is that you try several uh, vaginal and personal lubricants and see if you can find one that really works for you. So on, the, on average, menopause happens around age 51. So if you're age 70, that means you've been in menopause for approximately 19, 20 years. So it really is unlikely that your body has very much estradiol in it, both in your bloodstream and in the vaginal area. And when you lose that estradiol, that's the main driver of some of the issues that come with painful intimacy in vaginal atrophy and menopause. The main way to replace estradiol is through an estradiol vaginal cream that's either applied with a vaginal insertion device or to the labia, to the external vaginal area. It's very clear that estradiol, when it's given in a vaginal cream form, can increase the elasticity of the vaginal area. It can decrease vaginal dryness. It can increase vaginal strength. Um, it may increase natural vaginal lubrication, although in general, that's probably not gonna come back to full strength. Now, another way to treat vaginal atrophy and some of the painful intimacy that happens after menopause is with a cream that's called DHEA or dehydroepiandrosterone. There's a brand name that's called Intrarosa, and I believe it's available as a cream form and also as a suppository or a vaginal insert form. DHEA is called a pro-hormone. Your body actually transforms DHEA into other hormones. 
in the case of uh, inserting DHEA in a vaginal cream, that DHEA can be uh, translated into estradiol in the vaginal area, but it also can become testosterone, which is uh, both of those hormones are very useful within the vaginal area to increase elasticity, as I mentioned, decrease dryness and help with painful intimacy. There's some evidence in the medical literature that DHEA vaginal cream may actually increase libido to a small extent and help with low sex drive issues. And that's the second thing I wanna address and that is that after menopause, it's very likely because your level of estradiol and especially testosterone is going to be very, very near zero, it's likely that you'll have a very low sex drive. And you may want to have a higher sex drive, but it, your body may not be cooperating, at least from a physical standpoint. Now, sex drive is one of those things that has many, many factors that contribute to it. There are emotional factors, there are relational factors, whether you're getting along with your husband or not, there are physical factors, there are mental factors, there are all kinds of things that go into libido and sex drive. There's the idea of a responsive sex drive that's not revving all the time, but will respond to a stimulus versus the idea of a spontaneous sex drive that's always ready to go. And different people, whether they're men or women, have different types of sex drives. Now, it's also very common, I've studied this quite a bit, um, that men and women will have different sex drives in their relationship. So there may be a woman with a higher sex drive and a man with a lower sex drive or vice versa. But it's almost always the case that there's a difference between the man and the woman in some respect. Whether one is high and the other low or they've switched, there are always gonna be differences and that's just something that we have to work out in marriage. There are some hormonal treatments that can make a difference in people, especially women, who may uh, not be satisfied with the level of desire or libido that they're feeling at the moment. And probably the major hormone that's used to increase sexual desire is testosterone. As you're probably aware, testosterone is 10 to 100 times higher in men than it is in women, but women do make a significant amount of testosterone. At least they do up until they go into menopause when not only does their estradiol drop off to essentially zero, not exactly zero, but close to zero, their testosterone, which comes from their ovaries, also drops off to essentially zero. And a good hormone optimization specialist can take a look at your blood levels of both your estradiol and your testosterone. Testosterone and estradiol can be replaced back to an optimal level in your system so that you see an increase in your libido or your, your sexual desire. So it's those, those two-pronged approaches that can really make a difference in a woman after the age of 70 who may be struggling on the one hand with vaginal atrophy and vaginal issues that make maybe sex painful or much more uncomfortable than maybe you remembered it to be. And then on the other hand, there may, may be some sex drive or libido issues that could be helped by optimizing your testosterone and your estradiol. Another couple of things I wanna point out. One is when you take a vaginal hormone, whether it's estradiol or DHEA, those are generally too low of a dose to increase your blood levels of estradiol, of DHEA, or even testosterone. The amount you receive vaginally is just not enough to raise those up in the general bloodstream. Now, on the other hand, if you do take, let's say an oral or a transdermal patch or a cream form of testosterone or estradiol, that is probably not going to get to the vaginal area very effectively to decrease vaginal atrophy. So in some sense, these are two independent dosage forms. You have a vaginal dosage form that affects the vaginal area and doesn't really affect the whole body. And then you have a whole body dosage form, let's say estradiol or testosterone, that affects the whole body and may affect hot flashes and bone density and irritability and mood swings and weight gain, but may not be enough to affect the vaginal area directly to decrease uh, painful intercourse. The best thing that I can recommend is that we find you a hormone optimization specialist, somebody who really understands what optimal hormones do as far as removing your symptoms 
and reducing your health risks at the same time. Now, I will have one caveat, and that is you can get hormones from a primary care physician, but it's not very likely that a primary care physician is going to be willing to give you hormones, especially at your age. There is one issue with hormones, especially estradiol, being given to a woman over 70. The conventional wisdom has been that women can't take hormones after, let's say, five to 10 years after they've been in menopause. And there are some reasons for that. Uh, there's a whole hypothesis, it's called the timing hypothesis. And that hypothesis has actually been proven somewhat true in a couple of different major studies. And that is that when women go into menopause, if they have their estradiol, their primary female hormone replaced right away after they go into menopause, they'll be less likely to develop heart disease and have a heart attack. But if they wait, let's say five years or 10 years, and then start taking especially oral estradiol after a five or 10 year gap from the time when they had, had first gone into menopause, that may actually increase their risk of heart attack and heart disease. A hormone optimization specialist will understand how and when to give systemic estradiol, which is estradiol that affects your whole body, to a woman who is 10 years past menopause or more. If you're a patient and you are interested in finding a hormone optimization specialist, maybe you're past menopause and you're having some of these issues with vaginal dryness, vaginal atrophy, painful intercourse, or maybe you've experienced a decrease in your sex drive and you'd like to see it come back a little bit. Well, a hormone optimization specialist would be the person to help you with that kind of thing. They can help you optimize your hormones so they're not too high, not too low, but just right. Those just right hormones can make a big difference in not only the way you feel, but also in your relationship, which could be a great thing for the long haul. If you're a hormone optimization provider and you'd like to get some more patients, you can join my hormone provider database. There's a link on this video or in the description below where you can click to join. And I have a woman looking for a provider in Birmingham, Alabama, another looking for one in Grand Junction, Colorado. Join my database if you're a provider and I'd love to help you out. If you found this video helpful at all, click the like button and subscribe to my channel so you get notified anytime I post a new one. Thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you again soon.